Don't want to forget the old trusty map now, do we? Well, as you can see, there's the Great Glacier. Actually, right now, there's been alternating clouds coming in, and then it does break through and clear up. So I'm going to just hang around a little bit, clean up camp, wait for this cloud to lift, because right now we're right in the middle of the level of the clouds. And then um, hopefully there'll be something that's worthwhile to see coming up in just a little bit. Well, now the rain came in, and I've probably been sitting here, oh, I'd say a good hour and a half. I can always just put on my rain gear and go out, but I wanted to really get some good pictures of this glacier, which is just amazing, and I'm right next to it. I just need a little bit of luck for the clouds to part and for the rain to stop. Maybe even a little luck to have some sunshine so I can get some good pictures and then I'll be on my way. But for right now, I've had my breakfast. I pretty much broke in camp and then the rain started to come in so I took all of my gear and put it inside the tent so at least I can have a few creature comforts with me while I wait this out. But right now, that's about all there is that I can do. Well, here we are. Fabulous Mount Baker and take a look at this glacier. It is just unbelievable. There you can see in just a couple of minutes, it goes from pretty decently clear and nice out to we're having a cloud that's passing right over us or right through here and the visibility really drops and then sometimes there's also rain along with it but it's such an incredibly beautiful spot that it's well well worth even a little bit of rain if that's what comes but at least i've had some chances to see it when it was really nice this is a little tarn it's a pond like structure but it's caused by the melting snow and water accumulation up here above where normally creeks and rivers and things like that run, although this is where they all get their start. Um, can't really see it, but the color is actually kind of pretty. It's like an emerald. And this was just above where I spent last night for camp. Check this out. We're walking right on the top of the mountain. See over there, it's very steep and drops off. 
and the same thing over there. But we're going to cruise right along the top here. And even though it's cloudy, it's still a really nice view of the glacier off in the distance while I'm descending. But it's just amazing how one step over that edge, like we're, we're coming up to here, it could mean a long step. Look at that. Isn't that it's really something? Right on the top. Now that is something. To be able to say that you've had the chance to do that in your lifetime. And here I am lucky enough to be here today doing this. It is just incredible and look at the plant life that's growing right at the edge of this trail on one side so green and lush and the other side just a gigantic slope of talus or scree from when the glacier pushes all this material off to the sides as it's sliding down pretty amazing little buddy that's it you get nice and close and smile I would say you were sunning yourself but not on a day like today right Check this out. You can actually see the cloud passing between this passage and there's a mountain that's in the background. You can sort of see the trees popping in and out. It's a very steep face.
this morning for breakfast we're having turmeric tea, rice pudding, and protein bar that I made. And then this is my front yard where I'm going to be getting my water in just a little bit. Nice little creek running by here. It was beautiful to listen to that all last night to lull me to sleep and just make me feel really comfortable in the setting. Well, I've got the last of my gear pretty much packed up. Just a few items to go. And uh, today we're going to do six and a half miles and get to Enchanted Valley. So I'm getting started at a pretty good hour for me to allow lots of time to stop and take pictures and to relax and have some lunch and things like that so I can enjoy the ride a little bit. And um, I'll be there later this afternoon. Here's some nice blackberries. Maybe a little bit past their time or so, but let's see if it's any good. It's still good. And there is a look at our objective. We're not going up to that glacier, but I'll be right below that in the valley. Tomorrow is the trip back, so it's going to be the same thing in reverse, about six and a half miles a day for two days, lots of up and ups and downs, so it's not like this will be going downhill or anything on the way back. At least I will be a lot lighter. Oh, it was so nice, I took a bath every night, tonight I used my bucket and went right over there to the stream and got some nice water and soaked myself up and cleaned myself off. I've been doing that every night and it just is making things like that and the amazing food have just really psychologically made something like this just so enjoyable. And there's all my setup for my food. So I'm going to cook dinner later and then I'll though the bear can and I'll just leave the placemat out and I'll use that tomorrow morning for breakfast too. It's just nice just being out instead of sitting inside the tent. Even though I can open it up and everything like that, being outside with weather like this just makes it so much better. So let me show you around the digs here. It's always a work in progress but this is my tent set up here. All the way up in the front, I have tomorrow's clothes laid out, my first aid supplies, a few other things. Over here, I have stuff that I might need to get uh, during the night, that kind of thing. So there's my toiletries bag, my bear spray, 
and uh, you know my timepiece and every now and then I look at the map and do things like that that I like to have handy and then I have some storage space here for things that I like to be able to get through get to in case I need to get them but you know they're less likely uh, down here and then I also have a little bit of room inside the fly and of course the part when I would uh, close this here and zip this shut um, I have room there inside the fly and what I've done is I've made a little entry mat so that I don't have to get my tent all muddy I can climb in by sitting down on that and then taking my shoes off and leaving them outside and there's stored space on the other side so you can see the tent fly is open there but what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip this closed in a little while and finish up for the night and that's how I'm going to store everything but keep myself warm and secure inside so it's a tidy little operation and now this is what it looks like when it's all zipped up So if it's raining, it gets completely zipped all the way around. All the flies are shut. But if it's a nice day, then I can just unzip this part here. And I can actually do this on both sides. And right now I have the net just hanging, but that can be completely zipped so that I can have just net and I can even roll up this part of the fly and have nothing but net and do the same thing on both sides. So it's about as open as you can get. I doubt that I'm going to have a chance to use it like that at all on this trip unless they're saying it's supposed to get hot tomorrow so if it gets really hot by tomorrow night still then I may need to do it but normally it's cold enough at night that I need to keep the fly zip shut but it's just a nice option to have so here's one of the chores I have to do every day pretty much and that is to filter water I had a different setup before, but I found that it was so slow that even though it was a little bit lighter, I just was not happy with it and it didn't work well in really small volume situations like trickle puddle kinds of things, maybe at a cliffside where little tiny bits accumulating at a time and you can just patiently, slowly siphon it off that did not work well with my bag but this thing you just pop it on it mounts one two three you make sure that this end is below the water line where it can draw you give it a couple times to prime and I don't know if you could see the water filling up in there but it is a happening thing. I'm already at a half a container and going up from there. Tonight we're having ginger jerky, spicy applesauce, and a cream pasta with lime infused into the dressing into the sauce. Um, I've been eating so well on this trip that it's really been very enjoyable. And this is a very simple thing. I'll show you how I do it.
it's definitely boiling. Well, it's been about 15 minutes and I think I'm ready to dig in. So, I'm gonna clean up with a little hand sanitizer. Even though I already just finished taking a nice bath and everything, but on the trail you gotta be extra careful, you don't wanna get sick. And let's see if we can dig into this. Here's the pasta. It's hard to tell through the bag, but that cream sauce has fully rehydrated and the pasta's ready. And all I'm gonna do now, just place it in there and dig in. Let's check it out. Look at that, see? It's not watery. It's not, you know, it's, it's not hard as a rock. It's perfect. Applesauce. It's the same thing. It's perfect applesauce. Nice, warm applesauce. Perfect texture. Spicy. Then I'll make a little dessert. This is a great way to finish off the day. Here's how the applesauce came out. Perfect. Exact perfect texture. Look at that. Not running, not falling apart. And it's warm, spicy. Mm. Keeps you from getting the chill at night. It's so good. I'm going to top this with some turmeric tea. Uh, I have some other snacks, but honestly, I don't know. I'm not that hungry right now. I'll have to see how I feel. But believe me, I'm not in trouble when it comes to eating on this trip, that's for sure. I'm really glad I cooked in advance. It's been great. This looks like the perfect spot to stop and have a little lunch. The creek is right over out there. I'm just gonna sit down and make myself something to eat and relax for a little bit. I'm gonna finish this. Then I have about another three, I don't think it's four miles, I think it's more like three, three and a half. And then we'll make camp for the night. So, um, this is a stop off, lighten the load a little. This next part's gonna be a little harder, so I wanna be fully fueled and as light as I can be and all rehydrated and I'll be ready. Well, this is the view from my front porch this morning. It's the last day at the Enchanted Valley four-day hike. And I have my breakfast over here just finishing. I'm going to eat. 
and then I'm going to pack up camp and head the last of the six and a half to seven miles to get back to civilization. Not a bad way to start off the morning. Beautiful view, sun coming up. Delicious warm breakfast. It's easy to get used to it. Lots of work involved, but seems like it's worth it to me. And that's so good. And now we're gonna take off down the trail, but I just spotted myself a nice ripe raspberry. And And here we come to the Graves Creek trailhead area. We cross this final bridge and the parking lot should be right around that corner. Here I am, solid glacier. I'm not gonna bother going any more than this because I don't have the right climbing equipment and this is slippery. There's the water coming right off of the glacier.
Now this is going to be a whole lot of fun. And away we go. Oh yeah, you feel the bounce all right, for sure. Whoa, whoa, weird, very weird delayed, and the wind swings it, I mean this is crazy man, there's a big hole in the floor right there. such a delayed reaction for the bounce. Whoa. And then when a gust of wind comes, you definitely feel it. Whoa, whoa. There we go. Now I got the timing, but that's because I'm all the way over here on the short end. It's the middle where it's really weird. Well, today's the last day. This is supposed to be one of the hardest days. It's gonna be almost all uphill, very steep, until the very last section. And um, I can't believe the trip has gone so fast. It's been good though. I've learned a lot. I'm certainly plenty tired, but um, it's been a good experience. It's just incredible here. This is an incredibly beautiful place. I hope I get to come back and see this again and start to see new things from it because there's just so much here I can imagine still to see. But um, I'm going to clean up, finish my breakfast here, clean up camp, try and get extra early on my start for once, knowing how slow I'm going to go and hope that I can make it back in a reasonable time today so I can be driving not completely in the dark on those back roads but um, I'm sad that I'm leaving but I'm also looking forward to being back in society and having all those simple pleasures that are so easy but here's the place where I stayed last night there's my tent over there this particular camping site is great because it's got picnic tables. This used to be a uh, drive-in area, but now it's after a flood of one of the roads, you can't get in anymore. But I had a nice setup going. There's the river right over there. You can kind of hear it in the background. I put out my big tablecloth so I could have plenty of room to sit out and be comfortable last night. It was very nice. Still got to clean that mess up and put it in my backpack. And then we're going to head off to the distance. You know, I've seen obviously a lot of woods while I've been out on these trips, but there's just something about this whole area. It's just so incredibly lush and dense and vibrant 
and I just love stopping along the trail and listening at that sound I can hear way off in the distance waterfalls and creeks with water running and there's birds chirping and little creatures making different noises and um, it's a cool breeze just it's so magical no wonder they call this wonderland it is just so incredibly beautiful peaceful I don't know it gives you like a an optimistic feeling or something of course that could just be that I'm finally getting used to going nothing but uphill all day but um, I have probably another mile and a half of uphill or so to go here. And I'm going to get back to it until we reach the pass. After five hours, here I am at the top. From this point forward, it's just another mile or so back to the trailhead. It's almost all downhill and easy. But it took five hours to get here. I'm exhausted. I'm going to need every bit of energy to help me coast down that last part. But man, just incredible beauty. I just don't think it can come across on the camera, but what an amazing place this has been. You know, I was just kind of thinking about things. This was an amazing trip, of course. That goes without saying. I definitely learned a lot. I know I still have more work for sure that I have to do. I've got to do something about lowering the weight that I'm carrying and being a little bit more efficient. Uh, I think that also I may and for future trips think about doing something where I hike for one day and then stay in the same camp for a few days after that and just do day hikes from there instead of packing up every single day and moving but I know that's kind of hard to do on vacation trips. But I think that that would have made things a little bit more enjoyable. It was a lot of work to pack and unpack every single day, every single morning, every single night. Um, it wasn't terrible, but again, it just seemed like then the next day you have to get the full pack on again to go to your next destination. And I would like to be able to just go light, explore around a certain area. And then that'll be it for one trip, so that might be something I'll try in the future, I don't know. Or maybe if I do figure out how to lighten my pack load enough, then I'll be in the kind of position where I can just, you know, pack everything up and move along every day efficiently, and it won't bother me. So that's something I'm going to work out. But this has been one unbelievable experience. I did it all on my own, took months of planning, over six months, and I pulled it off. And never got lost once, worried about it a few times, but never got lost, not once. Um, even the moments where I was starting to have a little bit of doubt here or there, uh, I was actually right on target uh, on the map. But, you know, I just didn't have anything to give me any kind of confirmation and I was in a place that I wasn't familiar with until something grabbed my attention 
So I did have a few of those times, but I never actually was lost, even during those moments. And um, I felt comfortable sleeping in the tent with the gear, but you know, like I said, I have to pare a few things down. Pretty happy with the way things went. Hopefully next time I'll do something that's just as adventurous. And I'm looking forward, I'm starting to dream I'm already about maybe some things that I might want to do for the next trips. Looking forward to it. There we are, Malwich Lake. And it's a great way to finish off the hike. So I think I'm going to chalk this one up and call it a victory.